Hello, good morning and welcome to the Friday blog for New Forest Morphs. We're really loving this daily journey, I hope you are too. Thank you so much for the new subscribers we've had in the day. We're moving up towards 366. We want to try and hit that 400 for another giveaway. So keep those buttons hidden, those subscriber buttons going. Um, we're really excited with all the feedback we're getting guys. So thank you to all our um, viewers that are making comments and we'll cover a few of them later today. But first, the most exciting part of the day after the locking, Jared, is... Checking the locks. Checking the locks. This is the exciting part of the hobby. Now, we put six pairs together, was it Jared, or was it seven? Let's have a look. Anything with yellow? One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six. So, usually you'd hope for at least two or three, if you're um, honest, in the first day. But we're going to leave them for... Now, the reason we did it Thursday is because they feed Mondays. So we've got an opportunity of Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's four days they've got a chance to lock. So you don't expect them to lock straight away. We forgot to check yesterday, so there could be some locks that have unlocked. <laughs> so we're praying that we at least get a couple of locks and we want to show you what we've got. So let's go to the first one, Jared. Um, the first one will be the pastel yellow belly pie and buttercup. Buttercup. Now, who did we put to her? Uh, the clown. The clown. Joker. He's a proven stud male that locks with everything. And I'm hoping, please, please, aiming for the double heads. Let's see what we've got, Jared. Anything in there you can see? Yep, there's a lot there. We've got a lot. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Come on, we've got messy in there. Look at the mess in there, Jared. Look how messy they get in there. Is it a good lock? Yeah. So, well done, Joker. So, one out of one so far. And you notice how steamy it is and how wet it is in there. So, that's all part of the course and leave it there. We're going to leave them to carry on doing the business. So, this is really good. When snakes are breeding, it speaks volumes for your setup because animals normally only breed if they're happy, don't they, Jared? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're having problems getting locks, you have to look at your husbandry, I think, or your preparation. There's a lot of things that we can maybe do a video on troubleshooting how to get locks. Now, Amber's not on locks. So the next one is the Butter Girl, Jupiter. She's a 100% het clown. So the clown project's really going well there. This is the second clown project that we're working with, and we're trying to produce pastel butter clowns aren't we Jared? Yeah. Now what do we put to Jupiter? Who do we put to? Uh, pastel clown. A pastel clown Bane. Now please 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 let's see. Certainly steamy in there. What have we got? Any good news in there Jared? Yeah there's a lock. This is another lock. Brilliant. Bane he never lets me down. He's um, such a reliable male. I'm so glad we've got two good stud clown males at the moment. Um, Really, really good news. And Jupiter's really good. Look how happy she is. She's allowing him to do the biz. Now look at, notice what's going on inside the rub jab. We need to just um, interpret behavior here. So the boy's got himself on top of the girl, which I think is what a lot of the top breeders say they do often. And most boys like to be on top, don't they? Or maybe the other way around sometimes, depending on your sexual orientation, I think. But looking down here, Jared, look how much um, hormones, and you can smell the hormones. I wish we had smell TV. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you're not. No, just for the teaching purposes, Jad. I don't mean. No, 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 no. So, well done, guys. Keep it going, and we'll leave them in there again. And also, notice one other thing about this, Jad. If you notice, they've used the whole of their water bowl. So, what should we do to, to make sure they've got plenty of lubrication in there, do you think? We shouldn't just close it with an empty bowl, should we? I'm going to top up their water bowl because they may need a drink between courtship. If you notice, whining and dining is a very important part of courtship. So when you see that situation, my recommendation is to top up because just as I do these video blogs, you know I get a dry mouth. If I don't lubricate, you're going to get a croaky pull and you don't want a croaky pull, do you? Even though, <laughs> no, I, I was going to crack a joke there, but I'm going to resist. I'm going to resist. So anyway, well done guys. So that's two out of two. Now, what would you say next, Jay? What's the third block we've got here? What have we got next? We've put uh, the Bell Project, the Cappuccino, and we've got uh, Perlo, who's our Bell. Cappuccino is a Platinum Lesser. Let's see what they're up to. Anything going on there, Jared? No. No, there's no lock here. So let's have a look and see. I think his wife's going into shed, actually, looking at her. 
she looks darker than usual. Yeah, she's been into a shade. So that might be the cause. So he normally locks every time. If they're not locking, it means that she doesn't want to lock because she's in shed. Now, don't worry about it. That's part of the course. So I think we'll leave that behavior. We'll leave them in because she may end up shedding out. The other alternative is to separate them and then try next week. There's no rush on this. You've got three or four opportunities in a month to do this. So it doesn't, so what I'm saying is that interpreting behavior, you don't always read and see the situation and you make a judgment call that doesn't work and you learn from that judgment call. And maybe next time, Jad was right. I thought, of, you know, yesterday I thought Jad made a mistake not putting them together, but I think he's probably spot on because even though the boy had shed out, the girl wasn't ready. So there we go, that shows you how shedding can affect behavior because normally they're rampant. But what, isn't it lovely that a man respects a woman by not thrusting himself on her? Isn't that lovely? Another good principle for life, isn't it? That if our wives aren't up for it, we, we just resist and hold back and we just allow our wives to love them in a different way. Um, so there you go. You get a bit of sex education here on the channel as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <Jeff. laughs> You're Sorry. a new camera man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on down. So we've got Sienna. Now this is one of the most exciting projects of the year for us, the Panda Pipe Project. Anything happening, Joe? Yeah, they're locked up. Wow, brilliant. Um, so um, this is, to ask you, this is one of my favorite projects. So the fact that they're locked, Jared, brings me so much delight and so much joy. So we've got Elvis, who's an absolute star. Pastel, cinnamon well, pie. We think, we're not sure if he's pastel. We're not 100%, I think he is, but we'll see what happens. But look at the mess at the back, Jared. Just zoom in on the mess so people can see what's going on there. Plenty of water, but we're not gonna disturb them. We'll let them get on with they're breeding so when we're checking it's really important not to disturb too much we're just doing this for um, education purposes so it's a quick in and out shake it all about do the yoki kooki and turn around that's what it's all about oh oh the yoki kooki oh oh the yoki kooki oh oh the yoki kooki Knees bend, arm stretch, bra bra bra. Okay, so so far we've got three, was it three out of four? Yeah. Three out of four, this is really good odds. Next one is the Phantom Jade. We put Titus to her. We're trying to produce Purple Passions, 100% Hep Ultra, Ultra Mouse. Mouse. Let's have a little look. It's very steamy in there, Jack. Any locks? No. No, but good. Good behavior though, look what Titus is doing. He's on top of her. Jared, we've missed a lot here, I can tell you that now. Maybe. Shall I tell you why? Titus doesn't mess about, so <laughs> he's right on the job, that's why we call him Titus. Um, I can smell hormones, and it's not just female hormones. <laughs> Sperm has been um, exchanged in this relationship, um, hopefully in the right places but I'm smelling sperm here, so I'm as excited about this as I am about a lock. And I guess, you know, I was talking about letting go of protocol in the textbooks. I some, sometimes it's gut instinct. You know, I was telling you about my fishing instincts and how I know how to catch fish without necessarily being over taught. Now, now, this is telling me there's a very good chance we've got a lock here. So I'm not gonna show it as a recorded lock, I'm gonna show, but I'm excited about it because I can feel, it feels right. And it's our fault maybe for not actually uh, checking this one yesterday to get a visual. So I think we've possibly got five here, Jad, but I'm gonna say four and one not locked. But I'm three. So? I mean three. Three, so that's three. No, no, three out of five. No, we've got one, two, three, 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 yeah, because this one, Was yeah, locked? that's right, three out of five, sorry. And a potential missed lock. And a potential missed lock, I think. So now Penelope, Penelope pit stop. The pinstripe, who do we put to Penelope our pinstripe? The banana. Banana boy, Apollo, who's got a rocket and a half when he, when he gets going. That's why I called him Apollo. And what have we got going on here, Jad? Messy. Disgusting. That is absolutely disgusting. That's dirty sex, Jad. Dirty. Um, any locks? No. Look at the poo on... Look at all the crap on, on Apollo. So, it's not smelling hormonal other than Poo City in there. So reading that one, I would say leave them for a bit longer. If it gets too, too messy, Jad, is it worth cleaning? Would you leave it? 
If they're not locked tomorrow, I'd separate them and clean yeah. it. You don't want them sitting in too much poo for too long, I think. Yeah. Correct me, maybe Professor Rob might be able to correct me on that one. He might turn around and say, no, don't touch, leave, it's all good. But I'm still learning, so I'd be welcome anyone else's ideas on that one. Drop a comment in the bottom of our video if you want. So I would say we've got half of our locks definitely guaranteed. Yeah. It's visual. I reckon there's at least one other in there, which I think is the one that we mentioned about the hormones and the sperm I can smell. And the other two are still courting. So we're going to be patient. And that's really what you could expect in a typical good husbandry setup. Um, and I think it's unrealistic to expect 100% locks. So if you're first time breeders and you are looking for uh, locks, the reality is you'll probably get 50% locks in the first day. And tomorrow we'll do a film and see if there's any more locking. Now, the other thing that we need to do before we go any further is we need to also check to see how our new uh, snakes that have come into the facility, how they're settling in. And we've got some lovely feedback from our viewers. Hamlin is coming up with an idea of names. He wants to call um, Bongo uh, Lola. And we'll, we'll tell you about that in a second. And I think Simon Millership, who gave us four suggestions, we like... Um, a couple of those names and we're going to use one of them on one of the snakes as well um, Simon so thank you for that um, should we go and check on them see how they go Jared now tell me what we should be looking for having moved snakes out of quarantine into their new homes what would you look at to make sure that they're settling in well Jared well the real test is if they eat on Monday you want to make sure that they look happy I mean right now they're going to be pretty docile yeah so you can see them all at the bottom there Jared so let's have a little look and see. See how Bongo's doing, Lola. I'm going to call you Lola. Now, the key thing here is not to mess with them. Yeah. Once you settle them in, you mustn't mess with them. We're just showing you for training purposes. She's in shed. No, she's not. No? She shed the other day. Oh, she shed the other day. Right. So with dark snakes, it's not always easy to see, but she looks happy. So we're going to call you Lola. Thank you, Hamlin, for that one. And let's have a look at the other ones. This one's in shed. That one's the one that's in shed. Make sure she's okay. Yeah, I've checked them all this morning, they're all looking good. Right, Jared's checked them all, so. The best thing is to let them all settle in. Yeah. And yeah. then on Monday, feed them, feed see them. if they eat. If they eat, they're happy. Yeah. So don't expect them necessarily to feed you the first time, because remember they've moved from one environment to another. Snakes have to resettle, rehome, rehouse. So don't worry if they don't eat. It doesn't mean to say they've got an illness. It just means that they... I mean, fortunately, because our ambient temperatures are pretty similar in the house and here, and because they're in similar rubs... Um, in fact, we get new rubs. I mean, there is a strategy that would say, take the rubs from the... Well, no, no it's probably not a good idea to take the rubs from the quarantine area. Yeah, or, no. No, probably best to give them new, fresh, sterilised areas and let them re-soil and recondition their own rub because like every home there's a unique smell to everybody and snakes have their own unique smell and scenting and it's very important for them to feel comfortable that's why don't be over clinical <laughs> would you agree Joe? yeah yeah good well i hope you enjoyed that sorry Joe. i'm <laughs> spitting at Joe a bit sorry. On my leg. <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry about that that means i need a drink a bit of lubrication but let's uh, go down and see what we're going to talk about today now, the nice thing, at, uh, Jared, is it's Friday the 15th, is it, or 16th? 15th. 15th. And what's happening on Friday the 15th at 12 noon? Giveaway. Giveaway results, guys. You've been waiting 10 days. Thank you. We've got 30 comments, which means there's one out of six chance of winning one of these t-shirts. And I'm just going to bring out... Not the one you're wearing. Not the one I'm wearing. Except I'm thinking about giving one to my stalker, Tina. <laughs> Unwashed. Because, <laughs> um... <laughs> we just see right now. Oh, Jared, nicely folded. So we've got all these t-shirts, different sizes. So they go from small up to triple XL. Small to triple XL. So we just got them restocked in. Yeah, Jared's our t-shirt man. So I'm just going to show you. These are brand spanking new and clean. And they supersede our first t-shirt because, I mean, when you're doing this, I'd recommend doing a small sample before you place a big order because I placed a big order on the first lot and I wasn't completely happy with them too much. But we've now got Jared took over and <laughs> you can see the difference when Jared gets involved with the marketing. He really does a good job. I think that's a lovely job. How did you improve the t-shirt, Jared? So before we had it with a circle around it yeah. and there was like a, a plasticky circle on the middle of the shirt. Yeah. But instead I took out the circle and I just had the... The actual 
logo. So the printing company printed the logo without the circle because what companies do is they, they cheat a little bit. They, they take your logo and they put it on a patch and they patch it on and it looks a bit tacky in my view. So I think that this is a better t-shirt and we should really send <laughs> t-shirts to all the other people that got the old t-shirts really, but mm. keep them anyway because um, I'm sure there'll be n more opportunities to win these. And Jack, you also did another designer one. Yeah, these were just, just for the in-house. In-house staff. Moment. We're just trying a little one on the front and then turn yeah. around. Not slacking on the back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's very important when you are setting up um, a um, facility like this, this is mainly for building relationships. And as you know, we're quite generous here. We give out five. Most people give out one or two on their giveaways, but I just think there's an awful lot of people out there that want free t-shirts that don't get a look in. So we're trying to give you extra love here and we're being generous by saying up the odds. And uh, to ask you, it's making good sense because you guys are um, subscribing and following. It is really hard to build a YouTube channel in this market because I was, when I set this up a few months ago, I was thinking to myself, um, there's an awful lot of people doing it and it's very competitive and I think a lot of people have got a limited amount of time so when they subscribe they really want something that they really do enjoy. And Jack, what's your feeling on your behaviour because you watch a lot of YouTube videos but you don't subscribe to everything. Yeah, I just can't be bothered really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want notifications popping up, I just, I like going on YouTube, yeah. thinking what I want to watch, go type it in and watch it. I don't really, Yeah. I don't have hours and hours to sit there watching everything that pops up. Yeah, so Jared has, and I, mean, I was totally respect that. Now what's interesting is when you look at stats, because I'm into stats, is that if you've got 300 subscribers and you're getting two or 300 views, that's not bad. Because what it's telling me is it's telling me that the majority of your subscriber base are loyal. And I'm trying to build up a loyal following because you guys mean a lot to me. And it's not just about keeping snakes. It's not about just keeping a collection. We're building a community. And I want that message to come across. And as much as I, you know, I have my um, spiritual background. Now you might think that's a hook. But for me it's equally a, um, a crook. Shepherding. Because shepherding is like husbandry. Being a good shepherd means you look after your flock. Being a good uh, snake shepherd means you look after your snakes. But if you're going to branch out into media, multimedia, it's also really important to look after your followers and subscribers. And you're as important to me as my snakes. And you know how much I love my snakes. Because two factors. Number one, I just, I'm a social beast and I'm missing that social contact in lockdown. So you are providing great medicine for me. Number two, I've got a, I'm not a professional teacher. I'm a chartered accountant and I, inside, I've always had this inhibition to be a teacher and uh, to be a presenter. And I've always, as a child, wanted to play up on the stage. And you can notice with my antics, that I'm a stage performer and player. So this is a great platform for me to, to go back to my childhood dreams of actually being a clown and clowning about. And I love it. Might embarrass Jad a little bit, but he's pretty good at the banter. And hopefully you're enjoying that. I'm going to try and keep the humour going. So that's another reason why um, I want to build a relationship with you is because I'm enjoying the social connection. And in this lockdown, it's so important to have social interaction because it keeps us focused on real relationships and not take our mind away from the worries out there. So that's another reason. So I hope you can see where I'm coming from. And I can't remember what it was now. I think it was, um, let me just check this. Uh, yeah, it was um, James Fitzpatrick, which I'm going to nickname 007, Bond. I said to him that not only do we need to bond with our snakes, but we need to bond with each other. And um, that's a little joke, by the way, Chad. I didn't get a giggle from you there. 007, think... bonding. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> My name is James, James Bond. Um, so yeah, the thing I was gonna say was that he asked, he said, please guys, I love your bongo. Um, and, and he says, uh, he likes the fact that I give recognition to the viewers. And that's what triggered me to, to share that message about shepherding is that shepherding is applied to every area of your life. You look after the husbandry, you look after the snakes, you'll have a good, happy life with them. If you look after your family relationships, if you look after your friendships, then you've got something special, very special. Because I believe that relationships are eternal. 
So I'm investing my time, not just for this life, but I believe that relationships will continue into the eternities, including snake relationships, animal relationships. I believe that if you lose a snake, that if you love that snake, God will give you the chance to be with that snake again. I believe also the same with families, that if you lose a loved one, it isn't the end of... Uh, it's the most saddest thing and the hardest thing to go through, I think, in life. But the joy I know, and this is probably why you might be thinking, why is this guy so positive and happy when everyone around us is like so negative? And it's because of my faith. Because I see a bigger picture. And although I'm a shepherd, I know that it's important to love one another and to look forward to future relationships into the eternities. And that is my belief and my feeling. And it gives me a massively beautiful perspective on life and how to deal with challenges and knowing that you know there is light at the end of every dark tunnel okay so that leads me on to the thought for the day which is um, what's the thought for the day oh yes yes I've forgotten the thought for the day how can I forget that sorry I wrote it down uh, the thought for the day is prevention is better than Jared, what do you think? A cure. Cure. Prevention is better than cure. Now, in this epidemic, we've got the opportunity to prevent us catching this COVID, and that comes in the, in the form of various vaccines. So, when I first heard about the vaccine and how quickly it came out, it worried me because I thought, hell, they probably tested it. I mean, I'm not going to start getting all this stuff into my body that hasn't been proven. But over time, I'm realising that it's a gift to us from the scientists, the doctors, the politicians, our world leaders who have bent over backwards, burnt the candle to get this to us two years in advance because they understand the need. And I'm now come to terms with the fact that I'm looking forward to this rather than fearing it. And um, I guess we can draw a parallel between what we're going through and how we can protect our snakes. And I guess when we do in our care series, we've got a um, playlist called Caring for Ball Pythons. I want to draw a parallel between what we're going through in COVID and how we can protect our snakes. And of course, COVID started in China, Jared, didn't it? In a small province, Wahoon, Wahoon was it? Or Wahoon? Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang? I think Wu-Tang. Wu Wu-Tang. And Wu do you know how it was caused? I don't know the full... I don't know all the details, I've heard something about a bat and then some sort of animal. Yeah. So they believe it was in a fish market and they believe that there was a contamination from a bat and maybe some fish, something was going on where the hygiene wasn't good. This is why I'm going to draw a parallel about disease and hygiene, that it's important that you keep a clean ship, otherwise you're going to attract disease, that you don't cross-contaminate, that means that you don't mix, like you clean... Um, your working tools, you spray them down, you wash and clean your hands. There's lots of preventative medicine that we can do. And I think this afternoon we're going to do a part two series where we go into detail. And we're going to focus on the biggest headache for most snake keepers, Jared, is what would you say is the biggest headache for most of us? And when it comes to disease and problems with our, with our snakes. I think the most likely one would be mites. Mites. Mites are a nightmare. Now, Jared, you've had... Four years ago, when you first started, you had no... Uh, my first ever snake. It was your first ever snake? That, what, tell us what happened. So my first ever snake that I got, um, I brought it home, and I had it on... Um, I think it might be in Cocoa Husk. I don't remember what bedding I had. Yeah. But um, I had it on uh, Jaffa, this is. Yeah. And this was when I was very new to the hobby, didn't really understand anything. Yeah. Um, I was handling it about two weeks after I got him. Yeah. And I had these little black things crawling all over my hands. I was like, what the heck is this? And I did a bit of research and turned out he had mites when I got him from the pet shop. And um, You got it from a pet shop? I got it from a pet shop, yeah. Yeah, be, wa be wary of buying stuff from pet shops, guys, because they've got so many reptiles, so easy to pick up a mite. And they can jump on your clothing as well. People don't realise that mites can jump onto your clothing. Yeah. They can be air, but I think... Well, look, this afternoon we're going to go... I know it sounds a bit awful, but we're going to look at the life cycle of a mite... And the series that I'm looking to develop is, if I basically give you a summary of what we're going to do, but then we'll give you the detail, is we're going to identify some of the threats and causes of various issues. So this afternoon's about mites. 
but we will cover our eyes, we will cover a whole bunch of other issues with snakes. And we are going to break it down into five parts. So you will we'll identify the threat and the causes of those threats. We're going to show you and build how to build barriers to entry, what I call barriers to entry, how to prevent a mite. We've not had a mite in this new facility. We've been going for, what, six months? And that is because Jad and I have both had experiences with mites in the house. And Jad had his four years ago, and I had mine about 18 months ago with one snake that gave me such a headache, and I'll tell you all about it. Well, we've and, got one right now in quarantine. And we've imported one, in, and Jared's dealing with one in quarantine at the moment, and that's why it's so important to have a quarantine. And we'll talk all about that. That's another barrier to entry. If you have a quarantine away from the facility, away from a room, not in the same room. A lot of people put their quarantine area in the same facility as their main collection. I think that's dodgy, personally, because they can travel from you to the other collection. They can travel through carpets, they can jump on you. There's a lot that goes on, or even it, possibly, there are, there's a form of the nymph. When you look at the life cycle, we study the life cycle, because by understanding the life cycle, you'll understand how it can get into your collection. And we're going to go through that. The third thing we'll do is we'll look at symptoms, which is, well, how can you pick up these problems? And there are symptomatic problems that you can need to be aware of. Mites are very small, so they're hard to, to find in the first place, and they can hide themselves in vents and... Eye in their eyes, up the backside. There's a bit of skin that is underneath their chin. It's folds, and they hide. They're notorious for hiding under there, and they burrow under their scales, and they breed like you wouldn't believe. There's a cycle to them, and we're going to talk about it, and we're going to hopefully give some remedies and how we can prevent it from happening, because, like I said, prevention is better than cure. So we need to be applying the six Ps. Prior planning and preparation prevents poor performance. So someone coming in for the first time, and those people that are experiencing problems with this issue, is that don't worry, both Jared and I have both come through the mite attack. And it's like an epidemic, okay? It's a micro form of COVID, in a sense, symbolically. And uh, we've come through it, we've treated everything, and everything's clean here, in here. We've got one in our, in our um, hospital, uh, which we have, um, which Jad is treating, and how's that doing, Jad? That snake. I haven't seen a mite on it for two days. So. It's been two days that we haven't seen a mite, and the number of mites are reducing with each treatment. And we'll go through. Jad will do a demo of how he treats snakes and mites to give you guys the help if you've got any mite issues. And then the other thing we're going to do is at the end we're going to share two or three other videos uh, recommended. We're going to do a shout out to a couple of people that I think have put out some very very good material, both on the internet and on YouTube on how to deal with mites. So that'll be this afternoon. Jad, how are we doing on time? Oh, you've got three minutes. Three minutes. So just to wrap up, I'm going to do a special uh, song and dance for Hamlin, and he'll get this. Go and check his comments. But here we go, Jad. Are you ready for this? Yeah.